How's it going guys? Earlier I made a diagnosis video showing what the problem was with this Chevy Cruze right here and it turned out it was actually what's called a PCV valve or similar thing that goes underneath this right here. I'll try to put the video right now so you can see it real quick, the diagnosis. Hey, what's going on guys? Here we are back at the lot. We have a 2014 Chevy Cruze we got not too long ago and on the way here um, a check engine line popped on, right? So, we're gonna go ahead and check that out right now. I'm using my little Zurich Z13, which is the, I guess, Harbor Freight scanner. Um, I bought it for like 200 bucks, or like 180, I think it was on sale, I don't know. But we're gonna go ahead and check the codes on this Chevy Cruze and see what's going on and hopefully fix it right now. All right, stay tuned, check it out. Step one. Put the vehicle key in the ignition and turn it to on, but without turning the vehicle completely on, you know? Next, we grab the OBD and we find it. There we go. Let's see, just go to real quick. Yes. All right, Pierce is successful. Check the permanent ones. Yeah. So these are the ones that I'm having trouble with. 171, 106, and 1108. So I've been doing my research and most of the time it's a very- Combination, by the way, sorry about this dinging. Uh, let's turn the car on. There's a very common issue with these uh, Chevy Cruze. Uh, let's open this up. All right, so the first thing we need to do is, you can see that it's like shaking a little bit too much. We gotta check around the edges. You can grab a spray bottle of water or car cleaner and look around and check and see if there's a vacuum. Um, if there is, you may want to go ahead and do that. Second thing you want to do is for easy thing is usually these canisters right here go bad too and they can cause an internal vacuum leak. Look, this is how much it's shaking. <laughs> this can cause an internal vacuum leak. So you may want to check that out, pull it out, uh, see if it's blow, see if it's uh, vacuuming from here. But next thing you need to do is remove the cover. Oh, and I already hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. But if you hear that hissing sound, this right here is my PVC valve. And I can't just pop this out. Oh, listen to this. All right, you hear that? That's the sign of a bad PCV valve right there. So listen, look at what happens when I, when I hold it. The engine stabilizes. Let go. It starts to run rough. Look. Cover it. Well, cover it good, right? You can even hear the noise. Let go. Just look at that. Look at that. Look at that right there. Hold it. That's good, there you go. Shaking like crazy. Well, that's what it is, so. Looks like the first thing we need to do is we need to order a new valve cover because uh, you can't remove these. It's part of one piece, like I said, and then we'll do the valve cover job, get it done real quick. I've actually done it in a previous video. I don't mind doing it again, so. There you have it. Um, 
I'm gonna do the second part of the video when the part comes in and we'll replace it to see if the problem's been fixed, all right? Thank you for watching. Oh, before I let you go, double check your intake hose right here, okay? Usually this is broken or whatever. You might wanna check that. But uh, there you have it, folks. Looks like my problem's right here. It's not that hard to identify, especially with these. So once I get the part, we'll see what, what we can do. Replace it. Hopefully that takes care of the problem. If not, we need to dig in a little bit more and uh, find out the rest, okay? Stay tuned. Bye-bye. So after we got that, we ordered the part and it finally came in. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove everything real quick and install this new valve cover on there. Get this ball rolling, all right? So just stay tuned. Check it out. All right, so once we have the hood open, we remove the cap. First thing you do is remove the negative uh, battery cable. I just wrapped some uh, mechanics towel around it so it doesn't touch. Um, next thing you need to do is we need to remove uh, these screws. You need a T30 for it. You don't have to do that. But first, we just gotta make sure that we take all this off from around, like all the wiring, okay? Make sure all the wiring is out of there and not in our way, like right here, because we're gonna have this all this thing come up and I think take this off from here and everything so we're gonna go ahead and remove all the wires from around here so we can expose all our valve cover screws all right and then uh, once we remove the wires we're gonna remove the coil pack unplug this and remove the whole valve cover screws pop this thing out and then replace that new one back in just like that all right so here we go all right guys so once you have removed all your obstructions out of the way you see that there's nothing blocking our uh, valve cover. We're gonna go ahead and remove this oil uh, filler tube. Let's put it down here. Okay, and let's remove our oil filler cap. All right, let's put it down here as well. And let's get taking this off right now. So the first thing, of course, T30, it's gonna fit in here. I'm gonna take this coil pack out of here, all right? So let's get this going. Very good. I think that way it has the whole angle, you know, and it's, it's a wide view and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Showing the people, showing the folks at YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're watching this, how to do this thing. You see, these Chevy Cruises, man, they're very nice cars, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know. They're, they're very easy and yeah. simple to work on. It. Yeah, very simple and easy to work on, that's right. So once these are out, guys, or basically loose all the way, it's easy to just manipulate this thing out of here. Bam. Here's your coil pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an eight millimeter or a star pattern uh, bolt, and we're gonna remove all these out of here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is this one? What is this? CRB is an E11, which is what fits on here the correct bolt but if you don't have one you can just use an eight millimeter socket let's put this bolt pack out of the way and let's get these bolts out okay so we can go ahead and do some youtube magic and once everything is loose and we're pulling it out we'll start recording then all right so skip ahead all right guys so once we have removed all the bolts they're loose and ready to go um your valve cover may be stuck so you may want to get something to pry in between and, and go slowly prying each of the corners out so you can have uh so you can come off and then we can just pull it up so i'm going to try to pull it up in one go i'm going to have my buddy here record me okay. all right buddy let's do it yeah. and the reason of that is because we don't want to damage the valve the, the yeah. heads because they're aluminum right. you don't want to damage the block mm -hmm. well this is it guys this is your old part and the leak that was coming was coming from here. This little thing right here, this valve was leaking. So let's go ahead and put the new one back in. In the same reverse order that we installed it, here's the new one. So we just gotta double check, make sure that the gasket is in there properly. And then we're good to go. All right, so like I was saying, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this new part in there. But first, be sure you clean off the edges of where the previous gasket was. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, 
the new one sets in with no problems okay so if you want to get some carb cleaner or, or, or brake cleaner or whatever and alcohol and you start going around it to make and it look sure clean. That there is no oil coming into the right um, just like he said make sure that while you're here diagnose it make sure that none of your spark plugs are full of oil and stuff like that so it creates a spark and everything runs good right okay well we're gonna go ahead and finish cleaning this up and then we're gonna put the new valve cover on and we'll get back to you mm -hmm. all right we're back back and we're gonna get it so i have the new valve cover here we're gonna go ahead and uh turn it so let's try to dig these underneath here there we go dig these underneath here Make sure it's all, it's all flush. There it is, voila. Mm -hmm. The new one's in there. We're just gonna go ahead and tighten it up real quick and um, we'll get back to you, all right? So we're gonna do some YouTube magic real quick and get back. All right. All right, so once your all the bolts are tightened up, we go ahead and we pop in our, of course we pop in our coil pack. And then we tighten it up with the T30. You see? So let's tighten this up. Plug it back in. Plug your battery back in. And then you should be good to go. So let's do that real quick. Right, let's put the gas cap back on. Let's put the dips back on. And then this cap back on. Nothing happened. All right. Now let's. Plug the battery in, and that is how you take care of that issue, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't hit, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> All right, finally, here we are. I wanted to show you before I uploaded the whole video, so this is just like a bonus footage. I wanted to show you the way the car looks when it's fixed. Here we go, check it out. All right, so I'm in the car, I just started it up. There's no check engine lights on. Let's go ahead and uh, put this up right here. It in right where is it oh there we go sorry sorry it happens all right let's pull it up dun 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 there we go no codes of course you still got to do the o2 sensor and the other uh evap but let's look at the live data and let's compare from before I don't know if you noticed before my short-term fuel trim bank one was around the 30 percent and now it's stabilized and it's up in the negative and stuff where it should be so sorry this right here i'm happy about that the problem is fixed let me go back let me see go back to oem enhanced oh no no that's global obd sorry sorry guys all right, let's go to OEM Enhanced. Before it used to say permanent, now it's not. Yes, that's the bin. OEM Enhanced. No codes. Very good. And we drove it all day yesterday. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. That's how it is. Let's open the hood. Let me show you what it sounds like now without that thing. That's how you do it guys that's how you fix your p11 i'm sorry p1701 and p1106 on a chevy cruise 2011 all the way out 2015 and stuff with a 1.4 turbocharged engine all right thank you so much for watching please hit that like and subscribe button comment or whatever sorry about my gum i'm chewing gum so much all right have a good one guys like and subscribe see you on the next video